everyone, Mr. Cotton here. I'm going to show you how to draw the cityscape drawing that we did in class. Now, if you've already done the beginning parts, you do not need to watch those parts, but you can move to the parts that we didn't get to complete in class. So I'm going to do it from all the way from the beginning, starting with a folded piece of paper, a ruler, eraser, and a pencil. So the first step is to measure up about one and a half inches. One and a half. Put a little mark right there. Taking the ruler to make that straight line. And get across. And that's the line where the houses begin. Now, create some dots. We're gonna have the first dot is gonna be right here, about one finger from the edge of that paper. And tell you what, we're gonna go an inch and a half, I believe it is, an inch and one half. So an inch and one half right here. That's a half mark. We'll put the dot there, and we'll construct our first house right here. You don't have to make those exact measurements, but those measurements work out pretty good in terms of the size we're using on this paper. Now, I like to plan by putting a dot here for the roof, so I know where the center is, and then I connect it up, and I have an almost perfect triangle. Design the front with whatever you need in terms to make this look like a house. Remember, this is the first layer of buildings. We want this to be the most detailed area of our picture. And as we get further and further away, we'll put less detail. As things go further and further away, they show less detail. That is the nature of this lesson. So we we'll put wood siding on there. Again, if I'm moving too fast, you may turn that video on pause or you may rewind it. You can go at your own pace. Okay, I'm gonna draw a second building, but this time I'm just gonna I'm going to use my eye, not the ruler. I'm going to do it kind of the same size, so I'm going to use this roughly the same size, and I'll draw the garage here of that house. There we go. See those planning dots again. If I want a lower roof, I'll put the dot a little bit closer to the house, or garage, that is to say. And there, good planning. Now, the garage has a much larger door, obviously. And little details that make it look like a garage. Lines. Whatever. It's your work. You are the designer. You determine how this is going to look in the end. Next step, I want to create some kind of an object between the houses, like a fence. A zigzag line works perfect. Followed by some vertical lines, and you have a fence filling up that empty space. I'm going to do this one, sort of a flat fence, oh, like that one over there. Lines. And then I'm going to finish this side off with another picket fence or zigzag. Okay, last thing I want to do in this first step of this lesson is the sidewalk. Notice when I do this, I'm making it get wider because as things get closer to you, they get bigger. So the sidewalk is getting bigger. And some details of sidewalk lines. Maybe a plant or two that was growing in the cracks of the sidewalk. And we'll do the same thing to the garage. Widen that out as you get closer to the edge of the paper. Now I like to put a little bit of texture in there like that with my pencil. Just little scribbles to indicate this is not the same thing as the sidewalk. You can color it if you want, but I just prefer all pencil for this lesson. Maybe even some shadow inside the window like that to make the windows kind of stand out. Excellent. We are now ready to move to the next step, which is drawing the larger buildings in the background. We're going to call those the apartment buildings. Now, moving on, we're going to begin the start of our apartment buildings that are in the background larger buildings such as these. So how I'm going to do this is I want to draw boxes behind my fence and homes. So I'm going to start by drawing a line that will be the side of the building. 
having it strike the fence. Very important that it strikes the fence. It gives it that sense of overlapping space. And coming across like that, I'm trying to plan well, where I want that to land again. I'm going to have that land roughly about on the other side of the fence. There we go. And maybe draw a second box. Maybe this one a little bit higher. So they're two different buildings. And then we'll come across right here and striking down to the fence. Awesome. So now we'll start in putting in details that we can look like an apartment building. Apartments are going to have a lot more windows, okay? But this is further away, so we want to show less detail. That's the idea, is to show less detail. We'll start with some interesting tops. We add some decoration, not too much. Remember, this is further away, so we want to see less detail. Um, some rounds in here, different. Okay, now I'm going to do something a little different than I did here. I'm just going to do a quick optical illusion that there's a shadow window. And so to do that, I'm just going to start drawing what it looks like backwards sevens. I start putting enough of those in there. I'm starting to create that illusion that there's a shadow in the window right here. And we'll do the same thing in the other side, except this time this will be the round building. We'll do what looks like little upside down J's forming windows and have shadows. And you, have to, you have to imagine when it goes behind the house, you have to imagine how it comes out like that. There we go. We can still put a few little details in there. We can put a little shading where the window would be like that. But sometimes when you're outside, you're looking in on a, you know, during the day, the inside looks dark like I did down here. So that's not a bad idea. And then the other thing I want to do is have something behind like the fence. So in this case, I'm going to draw some trees or large bushes, kind of take up that space behind those buildings. So it's not just empty space. We refer to the empty space as the negative space. So we want the negative space to be interesting to look at. There we go. And that concludes the apartment buildings. Next we're going to draw the skyscrapers in the background. And I believe that's the piece that most of us missed. All right, time for the grand finale. We're going to add the city skyscrapers in the background. It's kind of like we did the apartment buildings, except even less detail. So, I'm going to start with the idea of drawing tall boxes, tall rectangles, just like that. And uh, you can put boxes on top of boxes. And then start adding little textures to imply there's windows, distant windows, very small. Lots of windows, though. It's building. Looks like it's about 60 floors high. Maybe not 60 floors. But it's very large because of the amount of detail that we're adding and the fact that it is being overlapped by the buildings in the front and that it's higher up on the page. So this lesson's about creating space, creating depth, making it look like it's going way back in space. So keep adding those buildings. Start up, down, we'll say up, across, and down until it hits something like even these bushes or trees. Make any type of top you want on the buildings. I'm gonna do this with a double triangle. There we go, it's a fancy looking building. Um, horizontal lines make good windows. Think about the buildings you've seen in downtown Seattle, if you've ever been to downtown Seattle, how often those giant skyscrapers, the 
in the distance those windows look like lines and stripes and so forth. And we'll put some windows in here. We'll use the, uh, the dots for them. I keep adding. It's very crowded. You can do a building that's behind by simply going like a seven. Like that. See that? A building behind a building. Great way to make a building behind a building. You can really fill this up. It's super crowded. Just like Seattle. And you can change these, doesn't have to be horizontal stripes, it can be cross hatch patterns like that, make great windows. Just use your imagination. The only thing I ask is that you try different lines for each building. Look at that little tiny building over there. Maybe it's just even further away, maybe it's further back. And uh, so many things to do, maybe we'll get this one further back. Funny triangle like that with zigzags going down the side of it like that. There we go. Anything goes. We'll just hide one over here, a little building behind there. Just keep adding them until you feel like you have enough. We'll use vertical stripes for this one. The idea is don't put two buildings next to each other, they look kind of the same, otherwise they will disappear, camouflage each other. Maybe a couple flags up there in the highest spots. Or a beam of some kind of a light. Sometimes buildings have lights on the top, but maybe here too. Kind of antenna of some kind. And then the last thing you want to do is throw in some clouds to take up that space in the background. So we want to fill in that negative space, that empty space I'm calling it, around the building to make it a little more interesting. Maybe we'll sneak another building in right here, just kind of push it right across there. That came from just put a bunch of little windows and things in that shape to kind of take up some of that empty space on the sides. We'll do the same thing over here. Slipping the line right there and then triangle. Just more little buildings that are just hiding from other buildings. It's all about organizing your paper. And that pretty much concludes the city drawing. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time here on Zoom Virtual Art with Mr. Pond.